Alright guys, uh, today we're going to be talking about mistakes, because I had a few games today where I felt like there were mistakes that were made. However, I want to talk about coming back from those mistakes and not getting tilted by the fact that you perform badly in a certain scenario. I had two games today that I think were interesting. Um, I'm playing the decks that you might have seen me play throughout um, a lot of... I didn't actually play Fret Blade, by the way, and in, in, it was a friendly battle, we were memeing, we were testing something out. The decks that you might have seen me play through a lot of my videos recently, the Avatar Nod uh, Air deck, which I actually changed to have the um, Scorpion and the... basically Scorpion and the Attack Bikes in, because I just felt like going full air was a little bit too easily counterable. Although I had been uh, winning some victories with it, I did lose, although uh, earlier as well. However, there were a couple of games that I felt like uh, I made mistakes in, and I didn't have the best day of Command & Conquer Rivals today, I will be completely honest with you. But I had this game versus MKL Pickle, and I had this game versus Scale Turex, who, both of which played incredibly well and made me uh, very nervous uh, during the game. I actually made mistakes, and I managed to come back from them. So this is going to be about m sort of learning from those mistakes, pointing out the mistakes that I made, and how I was able to just stay cool and try and come back in that situation. So, I generally tend to assume that versus most people, there's going to be more of an aggressive lineup. And, and with Jade especially, I assumed that this was going to be a more aggressive deck. So I started with the Laser Troopers. Now, he has done what I like to call an ultra-defensive start that really only works on a map like this. He blocks off the entrance to his harvesters to stop me from a, a rushing with attack bikes. Um, this is the militants. All the militants are designed to do is to prevent the attack bikes from getting to the tiles where his harvester is. And he probably puts another set of militants on the bottom and then builds another harvester and then has two sets of militants guarding his double harvester. Uh, because I went laser squad, I actually gave away a lot of my laser squad to those militants, and I saw him go for the double harvester. This is where my deck started to come a little bit unstuck. I didn't actually have much to punish the double harvester, and considering I'm running an avatar deck, I thought my best response was to go to the double harvester myself. Now, I probably could have gone Double Harvester a little bit earlier here. That was the mistake that I made. Uh, I chose to go for the Flame Troopers. I probably could have just gone straight into the Venom, and the Venom would have put more pressure on him, would have cleared out those Militants more quickly, and I might have started charging the Missile. And that's another thing that you're going to notice here uh, that I make the mistake. I actually don't follow the advice that I always follow, which is if you're going up against someone and you tend to have the upper hand, you want to try and make sure that you're winning that first missile. You want to charge that first missile as a priority. So instead of using this Banshee to sit on the point and guarantee that I win the first missile, I actually use that Banshee to take his Harvester. And while successful, it's not actually winning me the game. Um, and it didn't actually net me a, a huge advantage. And only by the time that his Cyborgs were out, did I actually end up having this first missile to contest. And this is actually the massive mistake that I made in this game. I was later to get my Double Harvester out. I had to act like the aggressive deck in this scenario and i didn't follow the advice that i'd been giving you guys myself which was really pay attention to that missile i thought because i was running a tech deck that i wouldn't have to but a lot of what command and conquer rivals is is adaptive you have to be very adaptive to the way that you play command and conquer rivals and if that means changing your strategy to uh, switch from the more uh, sitting back deck to the more aggro deck, I should have done that. I should probably should have focused on getting my aircraft across all three points and securing the first missile. If I secured the first missile with a double harvester out, I have much more time to work with. Now that he has won the first missile, I have to do everything that I can to respond to him. And although the avatar is a very, very good response to pretty much anything, um, I still now have to play catch-up to him. Even though my avatar is out, I still have to play catch-up. And then I look at what I'm facing. Basilisks. Basilisks are a very, very good way of dealing with avatars. They ramp up in damage over time, avatars can't respond to them, and I'm very lucky that I actually chose to include and keep the Phantom in my deck. I made a small micro mistake there, which meant that losing me the Phantom. Um, luckily, I managed to get another one out because I had that double harvester and the Tiberium ramp up over time has allowed me to get to this point. Uh, and honestly, uh, from this point onwards, I kind of secured things a little bit more. But I, I just, I made massive errors this game, especially in the early game. And that first missile could have potentially thrown me the game, especially with the fact that he had the cyborgs out. If I hadn't uh, saved up for the avatar and been a bit more hasty with my spendage, spendage I might have actually ended up losing this game. Uh, and with his, uh, his um, laser squad on the field, I made a couple of micro errors, and with double basilisks, it actually got really sticky. The double basilisks actually ended up getting really sticky, and I managed to use my Oxana buff to get it out of that uh, 
that Jade Missile, but this is how close it was. A single Jade Missile um, could have lost me this game simply because of some mis mistakes that I made in the earlier portion of this game where I gave up the first missile for free because of some very poor decisions around stalling that missile. Did win in the end, obviously, but I think I, I, I need to reflect on how I performed in that scenario. I think I definitely performed better when I got the Avatar out and the Phantoms were a good response to his Basilisks. However, absolutely screwed up that first missile. Uh, I could have been in a much easier winning position this game if I hadn't messed up that first missile. So this is, again, going back to just being adaptive and learning how to, uh, to cope with your mistakes. I didn't give up once I lost the first missile. I waited and was patient and went for the avatar and then eventually um, sort of put myself into a position where I was where I was winning again. But you, you you know you should look at your replays and reflect upon what went right and what went wrong. In that game I definitely made the wrong decision when it came to dealing with the when it came to dealing with the, the first missile. I should have reflected on the fact that he got his double harvester out first and I should have just just pushed out my stuff pushed out my uh pushed out my stuff onto the missile pads and got the first missile to put pressure back on him when he won the first missile he could happily go for his basilisks happily go for his expensive units because the pressure wasn't on him and it was up to me then to be proactive which is where you don't really want to be you want to be the one forcing your opponent to react to you if you're the one that's reacting it becomes a lot harder the next game that I want to watch is a GDI game that I had with my GDI MLRS deck going up against the exact copy of the GDI MLRS deck um, at just a little bit lower levels. But this guy is really, really good at micro. I, I had a very tough game here. Um, and again, I did make mistakes in this particular game. I didn't micro very well. And I'll talk about it uh, as we go on. But this is, I don't really, I'm not a big fan of this map personally. I, I find this map uh, a little bit difficult to play on. So he did exactly the same thing as me. He uh, he went for the war dogs as a second thing, a second um, uh, sorry, as a first scouting unit. Uh, and just notice what I'm doing with him. Uh, just whenever he steps off the pad, trying to get it to charge again, he's doing the same thing. He's happy to let it charge. We both have the same outcome in mind here, uh, and we're both pretty much going to mirror each other in terms of responses. He goes for the jump jet troopers. I go for the jump jet troopers. This is kind of uh, of how it is. And again, I'm just trying to make sure that whatever the case is, the missile is charging. And he did a really good job of just saying, okay, you can chase my war dogs if you want. I'm going to go straight for your harvester, and I'm going to put pressure on your harvester, uh, which actually resulted in me having to do a little bit extra in terms of spending, uh, which he didn't have to do. He went for um, the one set of shockwave troopers, where I had to go for two sets of shockwave troopers, which actually puts a bit more pressure. He moved his harvester, which was the sensible thing to do. I did not move my harvester. Um, and that actually put him in a position where he could then move back with a much more healthy harvester. I'm in a position where I have to constantly think about um, my harvester being aggressed upon. And something that I you may have noticed throughout the, uh, the early part of this game, and I will show you, I will talk about it. Something that you might have noticed that I didn't do, I left my shockwave troopers up at the top of the map and left them there for a good 20 seconds or maybe not 20 seconds but i left them for a very long time uh, i could have moved them down to contest one of these pads i could have moved them down to the bottom right pad if i just got my shockwave troopers out um i from that position i probably would have been uh, able to win this first missile which spoiler alert as you can tell i don't win this first missile he also very nicely contested the bottom left hand pad and with a bit of micro i might have been able to uh, keep that pad alive but realistically with only two sets of units on the field i was never going to be able to contest across all three pads and that's the mistake i made i just wasn't quick enough with my micro this guy was playing all over the field had played incredibly well i used 40 tiberium to go for the lieutenant strong arm turret which actually versus even level shockwaves is going to lose as well as having jump jet troopers on the side so I just had some missed micros in this early game. Um, and versus a deck that is identical to mine, that's not exactly a great position. Now you've got to look at the fact I'm basically giving up my Harvester here. Um, his incredible push from that middle uh, side of the, the field to get a free Harvester out of me. Uh, again, because of the work that he did earlier, because I didn't move my Harvester. Uh, and I actually then go into a position where it's MLRS versus MLRS. And I'm actually massively on the back foot here. I even don't go for my Harvester straight away because I really want that pop cap to be used uh, with a pit bull because I think it's more important. So now this is going to be MLRS versus MLRS battle. It's uh, it's actually going to be a, a real struggle for me because I want to keep my MLRS as healthy as physically possible because I think the game is going to be won here by whose MLRS survives the longest. Uh, my MLRS, unfortunately, does end up going down to the Lieutenant Strongarm turret, which uh, puts him in a really good position. Now, he made a mistake here. If he had moved his MLRS up 
uh, towards this pad, I would have lost. I would have just straight up lost. The fact is, he didn't move his MLRS any further up from the position that it's in. He was not aggressive enough with that MLRS, which meant that I was able to get another one out for free and start my preparations to move my own MLRS up. And you'll notice I actually managed to do a small out micro play on him. Uh, but I made massive mistakes in the early game, and I was um, not punished. I, I, I managed to come back through a very clever piece of play. Wait until he shoots this MLRS missile. Wait until he shoots. That's him sh shooting that MLRS missile there. Uh, I am now going to move my MLRS up when he attacks the War Dogs. I set it up on the platform to make sure I win the missile, and then I kill his MLRS after I saw that he used his own MLRS. Um to uh, to shoot my war dog so that was actually a really heads up play and pretty clever he now actually sees two mlrs's of mine on the field and thinks that he can consign himself to a hammerhead base rush play i don't think he needed to do this but luckily i had enough pop cap to go for um two pit bulls and a lieutenant strong arm turret which was enough to actually uh, deal with these hammerheads uh, and to be honest he, he, he looked like he was going for a full arm base rush play uh, luckily i managed to deal with that uh, pretty easily but Regardless, um, you know, I'm now in a position where I've got to uh, defend this middle uh, platform, but I've got two MLRSs to do so. Um, and even with this uh, singular pit bull, I've, again, I'm making a mistake here. I kind of left that pit bull doing nothing for way too long. I guess I was just focusing on too many other things. Um, you know, I finally take out the next pit bull, uh, and with a Lieutenant Strong Arm turret on a, a really good place defending this, uh, this top platform, I actually just run a set of jump jet troopers over to the bottom right platform, which ends up uh, giving me the pressure to win this missile. And right at the end, we take it. But we managed to come back from what was a really, really tough game. And I made some massive micro errors in the early game. Scale, like, pr credit to this guy. He played such a good game in that early portion. I think he could have won. Uh, but he didn't move his MLRS up once he had, had taken the advantage. And that is something that you guys need to be aware of when playing this deck specifically. When playing the Giga Cannon, when playing the MLRS. When you get the advantage, you need to move it into an aggressive position. When protected, the MLRS is an incredible zoning tool that is weak to a very few units. The real true counters are things like Orcas and Banshees and anything that's got uh, a two-tile radius and is air. The MLRS generally can be protected versus most anti-vehicle infantry and can be protected very easily versus vehicles because that is what it's good versus. So unless they are running an Orca or a Banshee, which Banshee obviously is fairly common, the MLRS should always be moved up into an aggressive position unless it is in that defensive position to hold the point. But he had put it in that position, which meant I was very easily able to get back into the game by putting my MLRS in the same position and taking the aggressive move when I had the chance. If he had taken that aggressive move on the second platform, on the middle platform on the second missile, he would have won the game. I have absolutely no doubt of that. Um, but luckily he didn't and we managed to exploit it and that something else you know that you've learned playing rivals about exploiting your opponent's mistakes um, you need to find those opportunities even when, especially when you're behind find even the smallest opportunity to try and exploit and it can end up winning you the game right i'll see you for the next episode soon